Good afternoon, everyone. Josh, a severe weather. We are tracking Tropical Storm Ernesto moving into the northeastern Caribbean Sea and strengthening and perhaps going to overachieve as yet another hurricane here approaching the Puerto Rico area and then maybe a threat to Bermuda. Thank you for joining me and my community today. What we're looking at is the decent potential here for Ernesto to become a hurricane sometime as it is approaching or moving away from the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Uh, what may happen is that this storm could be intensifying very quickly over favorable waters here in the next couple of days. And then we have to watch it very closely if we're on Bermuda for potentially impacts from a major hurricane moving to within 100 miles of the island. So we're going to talk about what's going on here in the tropics. And you can see this is Ernesto, a lot better defined today, starting to form a central core as it moves into the Northeast Caribbean, away from the Leeward Islands and towards the Virgin Islands. Uh, we do have another wave to keep a, a close eye on here, but right now I'm not showing uh, signs of development. Uh, that is a couple days away, and then a bigger wave uh, set to move off the African coast here in a few days. Uh, conditions here ahead of Ernesto are very favorable. We've got ourselves a region of high pressure to its east, and lowering wind shear as this front will be lifting away to the north and east, opening up an avenue for the system to develop pretty quickly here over the warmer waters of the southwestern tropical Atlantic. You can see on the water vapor image behind, here are our next two features. Uh, right now, marginal conditions for development, but something that we will have to be tracking here in the next few days. And then here's a, a broader look here at the uh, main development region and you can see ernesto centered right here uh, near st kitts and nevis beginning to make the turn and slowing down and what you see is an increase here in outflow and concentrated thunderstorm activity and a much better looking system today than it was yesterday and one that i think will be forming a pretty intense core here over the next couple of days uh, you can see here right now a bright thunderstorm activity on the visible or at least bright clouds going way up beyond fifty thousand feet here and a look here from uh, Depaya, I believe, is the website. And just over the last hour, you can see uh, that the thunderstorms are now really beginning to take shape as a core begins to form here. And once this core is established, uh, we will likely see a more steady rate of intensification beginning this afternoon into tonight. As the system is approaching the Virgin Islands and maybe Vieques and perhaps even the northeastern tip of Puerto Rico. And latest projections have it uh, just clipping Puerto Rico, and instead of making an official landfall, avoiding most major land masses at this point, which means uh, the system has a better chance to develop into a stronger system. This is a look at uh, the last 24 hours of radar from Brian McNulty at the University of Miami, and you can see the system began to become better organized, and now the core of the storm uh, is moving away from the radar site, which is here on Guadalupe, the storm center right about here now and beginning to gain more latitude. This here is St. Croix. I do believe we'll see the storm moving onto that island here or just by the western end as we get to early tonight and then heading for St. Thomas, St. John and Associated Islands as we get towards the late night hours. Here's our official forecast. And one thing I do want to point out, uh, we now have, in addition to tropical storm warnings for these areas, a hurricane watch, meaning there is a small chance that hurricane force winds could still impact uh, St. Croix, as well as St. Thomas, St. John's, and the rest of the British Virgin Islands. Uh, Vieques and Culebra uh, are also under hurricane watch. And for the time being, Puerto Rico is not, but as this system comes closer, if it does adjust to the west by 30 or 40 miles, uh, that will increase the risk for perhaps strong tropical storm force winds or perhaps even hurricane force winds here on the northeastern tip of Puerto Rico. Uh, that would be mainly across this portion right in here. It seems to me that if you're going to have a hurricane watch out here for Vieques, you might as well have it for the northeastern tip of Puerto Rico. But again, this is just precautionary. I don't know if we necessarily have a hurricane yet, but we are getting closer to that point. Now, the Hurricane Center has it a hurricane by morning tomorrow and continuing to intensify. Where we differ here on my forecast from the Hurricane Center is that I think it is going to intensify much more quickly uh, as we get to tomorrow and tomorrow night. And by Thursday morning, I think we'll have a major hurricane category three strength. 
After we get past that point, uh, we start to see some cooling of the waters and a little bit of an increase in wind shear, but one that will still allow for this storm to be a powerful system as it approaches Bermuda early on in this upcoming weekend. Beyond that, I don't think we see a direct threat to the east coast of the U.S., but obviously the cone of uncertainty, uh, if you extrapolate it, could include eastern parts of New England as well as the Maritimes of Canada. Um, right now, the majority of model guidance brings it up in this general direction, uh, close to the coast of Nova Scotia, but maybe just clipping Newfoundland as we get to about a week from today. So that's still a week away, but that is also something we need to be keeping a closer eye on. If you take a look at the ensemble means, you can see uh, the curve is looking more severe and more of a trend back towards Bermuda than this time yesterday. You can kind of see here on the map here, uh, Bermuda is this tiny little island right here. But if you average together all of the ensembles, you can see that they bring the core of the storm very close to the island of Bermuda. It's only about a 20 square mile um, island, and we're taking the storm track basically over the western end of the island if you average all the models together. And a lot of us know here that the right front quadrant of the island is, in fact, the one that sees the worst wind and storm surge conditions. And this would be a worst case scenario, if correct, if this forecast holds for Bermuda. If you look here at the GFS ensembles, you can see no threat to the U.S. directly. We may have some indirect impacts, but for the most part, most of our model guidance keeps this offshore. And after it passes east of uh, Puerto Rico overnight tonight, the next island it could impact would be Bermuda. After that, maybe clipping eastern Nova Scotia or Newfoundland. So that's what we're looking at as far as the ensembles. Here's a look at individual tropical models and a lot more agreement today now that the storm has formed and is forming a core. Uh, the model guidance takes it just east of Puerto Rico here. Uh, about 18 hours from this model run, this is 8 a.m., so we're talking about 1 or 2 in the morning tonight, uh, local time, and then moving away from Puerto Rico later in the morning tomorrow. Uh, when it gets into here, I think we're going to see a pretty rapid intensification, and I'll show you why in just a little bit. Um, the storm official track takes it right over Bermuda here, which is in this area east of uh, southern parts of North Carolina. There's only one model that would escape it. That's the H Wharf model. Uh, the other tropical models are basically within 50 miles of Bermuda, with the exception of the H Mon over here. So, not looking good if you're in Bermuda, but there's still some time for this to change as the system is still about five days away. This is the intensity forecast. You can see here some rapid intensification showing up now, and uh, a good chance we have a hurricane by morning. Uh, what I think will probably happen is that these models in here. Uh, are still too conservative. We may see it going up to category three in about 36 hours or so. The official forecast does get it to about that point, but not until later on in the week, Thursday night and Friday. And I think in all honesty, it's probably gonna get there a lot quicker and then maybe settle uh, somewhere in the category three intensity. And there's an outside chance this even becomes a category four for a brief amount of time, like we saw with Franklin uh, last summer. Here's a look at the ship's forecast. The intensity guidance shows a pretty good chance of intensification here over the next 24 hours. And even if you look out beyond that over the next two days, a 33% chance that this will intensify by at least 55 knots, which is seven times the climatological average. Uh, this model was run with 40 knots. If you add 55 to that, you get a 95 knot hurricane, which is approaching category three strength. So it is showing in the next two days, there is uh, at least a third of a chance, 33% um, chance this is approaching major hurricane status in just two days. The official forecast is category two, but I do think, again, that's a pretty decent chance. You can kind of see why here. Wind shear is very low. Sea surface temperatures are remaining at about 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. That's the mid 80s Fahrenheit. And relative humidity is favorable as well, allowing this system to grow and add moisture to it. It remains favorable until we get to about 72 hours as the system is getting closer to Bermuda. And at that point, we'll start to see things leveling off as that heat content does begin to drop off. Here's a look at individual models. You can see this is the HMON tropical model showing gradual intensification, which should start to pick up as the system is lifting away from the Virgin Islands overnight tonight. This is about two in the morning and pressures are dropping close to hurricane force by morning tomorrow morning. The pressure continues to drop and we start to see an expanse here in the wind field. And by tomorrow night, potentially a category two or even a category three hurricane, a pretty uh, well-defined core here. 
and dropping pressure down to about 950 millibars, which would put it around major hurricane intensity. Uh, beyond that, there will be some wind shear. You can see this model, the HMON, does take it to the right of Bermuda, uh, the track in this direction. Bermuda's over here. So this would be best case scenario, in my opinion, for Bermuda if it misses to the right. I'm going to show you in a second, though, that other models do not agree with that. Uh, here is a look at the HWERF. It shows the system gathering intensity here and then uh, becoming much better defined here by tomorrow night and Thursday morning. And what should be a pretty large hurricane by the time we get to Friday. Take a look at the eye of this system. That's probably bigger than what we'll end up seeing. But this is Friday afternoon, uh, menacing looking storm system. Here's Bermuda. And you can see the HWARF model actually misses to the left. That would not be as good as what I just showed you with the HMOM, which was over here. Um, but if it's far enough to the west here, the worst of the wind should stay just to the left of Bermuda here, just to the west. Uh, if you average the two together, though, unfortunately, that gives you kind of a worst case scenario. And here's a look at the HAFS tropical model, and it's going to look a little different structure wise, but you can see uh, definitely a, a growing storm system. And here is where it starts taking aim at Bermuda. See, this is Bermuda right here. I will circle Bermuda right here. And unfortunately, here is the eye of the storm going directly over the island here at about five in the morning on Saturday. So we do have time still for this to change, but this is obviously of growing concern for us here in Bermuda. Here's the GFS model from earlier, uh, and you can see making the bend here, intensifying as it does so. So it kind of goes out this way and then comes back. Bermuda's right over here. And as we move this along in time, um, you can see that the storm system will continue. Um, to track in the general direction of Bermuda. I don't have the latest of this model run just yet. Uh, the earlier run went just to the right of Bermuda and then kind of made a bend back to the left. This particular run is a little bit farther west, um, but you can see here, um, if you, again, everything's within about 100 miles of Bermuda, which is a, a, such a small target. The European model shows the strongest winds are gonna go by on the Western side of the island as well. Uh, we will see hurricane force winds across this general area in here. So the storm is gonna grow from where it is today. And uh, it is obviously of a concern here again to Bermuda. I know I've said that about eight or nine times, depending on which model I show you, but obviously something we need to be tracking. The European forecasted wind right now uh, escapes the worst from Puerto Rico. You can see 40, 50 mile per hour winds, uh, but Puerto Rico itself escapes the heaviest of the wind, not the rain so much, but you can see the stronger winds will be impacting the British Virgin Islands with gusts approaching 60 miles per hour. The worst of this wind is expected right now to remain just north of these islands. As we look farther out into time, we will see here on the European winds approaching 100 miles per hour over the weekend on Bermuda and the wind field actually grows as it approaches Nova Scotia here on Monday of next week. The official track recurves it to the right, but may still clip portions of Newfoundland by the time we get to next Tuesday. Here's a look at Bermuda proper, and you can see the winds will pick up here Friday afternoon. We'll have gusts of 50 to 60 miles per hour Friday night. And then by Saturday morning, if this track is correct, all of the island is dealing with hurricane force winds, which will cause widespread power outages and likely some structural damage as well. So uh, there's a reason uh, Bermuda is, you know, often in the crosshairs based on the way these storms track of these kind of storms, but it's a very small target. And to hit that target would require an extreme amount of accuracy. So we're obviously hoping this isn't gonna be the case but right now, certainly not looking great. So keep it tuned here over the coming days as I give you kind of the latest adjustments here. Um, typically when we get five, six days out, the average um, error in storm track grows to beyond 200 miles. So it's very possible this ends up 200 miles to the right or 200 miles to the left of where it's showing today. Uh, but we'll have to watch that for you guys. So I appreciate your time today. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please consider becoming a part of my community and subscribing here on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will give you daily videos around lunchtime. So I thank you and I obviously uh, wish the best for everybody in the path of the storm. I'm a Christian. I pray over the safety of folks. Um, I uh, give all the honor, all the glory to God, and I thank him for every day because no day is guaranteed. Uh, but what I do know is as a Christian that I've been saved through the grace of God through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, 
which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, only by grace are we saved. And that is just what drives me every day to do this, to help others. It is to fulfill my calling from God as a meteorologist to be able to help others, uh, but to go out in faith, go out into the uncertainty and to trust God because every day has been just a miracle. Um, God has created all of us. Whether or not we choose to believe that is up to us, but we can be saved from that gift of grace eternally and we can live with Jesus in heaven one day. I pray that you believe that, but if you don't, uh, that is okay as well. Uh, it's not up to me to make that judgment, of course, um, but you're welcome here regardless. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you soon. God bless you.